Hello all and welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate USA. Today we have Jackie Kahn of Keller Williams Suburban Realty back on and we're talking questions. Remember to like and subscribe for weekly content. Let's get going. All right, everyone, welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate USA. And today on the show, we have Jackie Kahn again. Welcome back, team leader at Keller Williams Suburban Realty. How you doing, Jackie? Thanks for having me again, Craig. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Today, we're talking questions. So, Jackie, how, <laughs> how do you go about changing your mindset from offering just information, just like splattering out information mm -hmm. to asking questions. So I, that's easy because I think the first thing to think about is why do we ask people questions, right? And there are lots of reasons why we ask people questions. Some are very obvious. We don't know the answer and we want them to tell us the answer, right? But some are not so obvious. You may need to ask a question so that the person you're asking the question to says what it is they're feeling or thinking the answer is. They may need to say it for it to be set in stone. So for me, in what we do, Craig, I think that's the most important thing is you're asking a question so somebody says it themselves, not you say it to them, you need to sell because. Let them say why they need to sell by you asking the question. I would also argue that by asking questions, you're finding out kind of their baseline of knowledge. Um, oh, yeah. There's this idea in education called critical pedagogy that was, I, I'm not really sure how hot of a topic it is nowadays, but the whole idea is that you go based off, you start your education based off what they know. You find out what they know, and then you go from there. So it's not like, uh, I'm trying to think, I used to teach singing. Well, I could have started with, okay, this is breathing, blah, 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 blah. Or I was like, okay, sing a song for me. Oh, this kid knows how to breathe. I don't need to waste time on breathing. I need to ask him what he thinks about X, Y, Z instead. So how do you see that in the realm of real estate? So I think in the realm of real estate, you know, for you and other agents, you guys are talking to clients, buyers and sellers all the time. And what you really want to drill down early on in conversations is the level of motivation, right? You want to work with the motivated. That makes sense, right? Or you want to find out their level of motivation so you can put them in the appropriate box, right? Um, so you, you have to ask questions. You have to keep digging with questions to understand a buyer's motivation or a seller's no motivation. It's not just when would you like to have this house sold by, right? To really work with that client and work with that client well and suit, suit what works for them and their needs, you have to go deeper in questions. What's important about August as your closing date or what's important about August as, as the time that we list your house? You may be surprised at the answers. You may know the answers and just need them to say it, but you also might be surprised at those answers. Oh, well, number one, you have an approach, don't you, that when you go to ask people questions, mm -hmm. tell us mm -hmm. a little bit more. I know you have something. So, yeah, so this is why this topic is, is important to me and, and what I've built out for, for it to really work. Um, I have a coach. And my coach, I've been working with her for almost three years. And in my first coaching call with this coach, and she wasn't my first coach, she was my third coach um, since I've been team leader. She asked me what my biggest challenge was um, in what I do, which is growing the office through consulting with agents and consulting with agents outside of KW to consider if it would be a good fit for them to move to KW. And I said, right now, what I'm finding my biggest challenge to be is when I hang up the phone with them or get off the Zoom or leave the conversation, I then think of the best question I should have, could have, would have asked them. Um, and she said, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, a coach doesn't give you the answers what you should do about it. She said, what are you going to do about that? 
And I said, well, I have questions here, questions there, questions in my notebook, questions in my head. I have no organization around the concept of asking questions. So <laughs> got a prop here, Craig. The prop yes. is this recipe box, right? And it's mm -hmm. filled with categorized, you know, groups of questions. Um, so that way I can take that box before I get on a Zoom or a call. I may just peek at the box and say, what are going to be the best questions to ask this person who I'm meeting with or this person who I'm calling? Um, and I'll pull out four or, four or five questions and I may or I may not need them. Over time, I need them less as crutch, crutches. Um, but when I first built out that box, I, I needed it a lot. And uh, the, the amazing thing is I'm constantly adding to the box. I'm constantly thinking of new ways I can pose a question or different questions. And that might be market related. Right now, I would say that's pretty much market related that I would be changing, you know, the level of questioning or the kinds of questions or how I word them. So um, that's been really just something that's grown through the years, this box of questions for me. Well, number one, how do you categorize your box? Because for me, I definitely do by buyer, by seller, and then mm -hmm. investor. And a lot of the questions intermingle. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious how you do it. Yeah, my, my questions intermingle as well. And I've changed my categories over the years. I believe my categories, because I talk to agents all the time, I used to categorize it in terms of goals, technology, habits, things like that. I used to categorize it that way. Now I will tell you my categories are care and concern, curiosity, connect, consult, and close. Oh, okay. So that is a whole different way because this way it's giving me a cadence in the conversation, starting with care, moving to curiosity, concern about what I learned from my curiosity questions and moving through to what whatever close might be and close might be for speaking to one of our agents like speaking to you craig close might be what what were your ahas from what we just talked mm -hmm. about what would your action plan be um based on what we talked so, about so, so you give a yourself a structure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's been working well i haven't changed that in a, in a while that's working well do the same sort of questions keep popping up are there a few that like always rise to the surface and it, do you ever have them are you constantly still adding questions to the box or do you feel that new questions tend to derive from the ones you already have? Like that's yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> I am always adding questions. I am always adding questions um, it, and it could be different ways of asking the questions or it just could be market related. Like right now, I could be asking you guys questions about what you're learning in terms of the lending world right now, right? So that wouldn't be something I thought about a year ago. You know, we, we've lived it, we've lived in uh, 2.5, 30 year conventional loans for a while. So now we're asking different questions to our buyers and sellers about that. Um, and there are, for me, there are the, you know, the questions that rise to the top is always asking would be things about goals. Are you reaching your full potential? What habits are you forming? What do you do every day? Um, you know, questions about how they can further develop and, and understanding where the holes might be. And for agents like you, I, I think developing a set of questions as to the pain points for a buyer or the pain points for a seller or what, what they're looking for in an agent, figuring that out with a set of questions would be the same, would be a correlation to what I do. Yeah. What do you mean by pain points and what are the sort of questions that you can ask to find them? Uh, pain points like for a seller or, or a buyer. Oh, okay. Well, well also I don't know. I'm, the I'm, fact I'm that it's definitely question. different. Yeah. So it's definitely different between the two. And I would also say that there's a third one, which is you have the investor also. And, and you have the investor. a completely different set of pain point. Right. So, so I'm there curious. Could be, there like, could be pain points about um, prior work with other agents and what they did well and what they didn't do well. Obviously, the pain, what they mm -hmm. didn't do well and what bothered them them. So I think that's important to find out if you can. Mm -hmm. um, pain, pain points about, you know, frustration about not being able to find their dream home. All, all kinds of all there could be all and, and things that you might not know, it could be, mm -hmm. you could, you could um, unearth some pain points about having hordes of people walk through their home, safety pain mm -hmm. points, 
things that you really don't think about. So can we put these, yeah, so can we put these into questions? How would you ask these questions? Because we're talking about questions, but how would you put these into questions? Well, I mean, so so for a seller, you know, you could ask, uh, you know, obviously you worked with agents before. What worked? What didn't work? That'd be an easy one. What worked? Tell me what worked. Start with the positive, then tell me what didn't work. Same with a buyer. Maybe a buyer's been working with three or four agents. They haven't found a home. What's wor- what, what worked in the process when you were working with that person? What didn't work? Mm-hmm. Those rise to the top a lot and very easy questions to ask and not forget. Mm-hmm. You might not know. Well, I, I, really, I, really need, I really need an architect to come look at it with me. I'm concerned about, you, know, you just don't know what you're going to find out. Um, you, you could find out that some, right now, you could find out somebody saying, I'm, wor- I'm worried about the economy. I might not get the bonus I was planning on getting in December. So would you say there's a difference between asking questions and overcoming objections? I think an objection is a question. Okay. It's just a blurted out way of, uh, it's just a blurted out objection, but that's a question. The mm-hmm. questions also create and help you with the expectations going forward. Mm -hmm. What I've discovered about real estate is I'm actually spending the, my job is really to level the playing field of expectations amongst everyone. Okay. Or that's what I've discovered. And to be their guide. You're their guide, right? It's to be their guide, but it's also to take everyone's different expectations and Mm -hmm. get them into alignment. Because when they're out of alignment, suddenly this person thinks, oh, well, during this, I'm actually going to be looking for this, 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 this. And this person's like, oh, I'm actually looking for these. And then they both are annoyed. So if I was creating your box of of questions, Craig, I would say a category should be setting expectations, questions to ask so you can set expectations by them answering and hearing themselves. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it was Steve told Stephen Gendel told me. Oh, I don't remember who said it, but it was ask what the five top things are that they want, mm-hmm. and then without fail, every so often they'll say, "Okay, I want, uh, I don't know, updated kitchen, updated bathroom, updated floors. I want a den, and I want a carport." Mm-hmm. And then we'll be looking at a place, and they'll be like, "But there was no pool." <laughs> Those weren't one of your five. And then suddenly it's, okay, what happened to those five? Mm -hmm. What is it suddenly about a pool and what suddenly in those five are not actually your need and what is just a want? Right. And going back to your original set of questions where you're asking about the top five, if they said updated kitchen, I would say, tell me more about an updated kitchen, which is sort of a question, more of a demand, but sort of a question. And (laughs) updated means something different to everybody. And why they want updated means something different to everybody. Yeah. There you're going uh, to uh, unearth a... if they're a, a significant cook, or you're just going to unearth that they're lazy and they don't want to do any work, or they just want a kitchen that's been updated within the last 20 years, which maybe mm-hmm. to you is not really updated. Yeah. So then when they say something about a pool, you can say, but remind me, when we originally talked, you told me that you were an unbelievable cook and you're even going to have me over. Mm-hmm. And you're deflecting around that pool. Okay. I love that. Um, (laughs) There is a... No, I do. There's a... Not a team leader in that sense, but there's a woman up in... Oh, it's Amy Owens. Mm -hmm. Up in uh, Keller Williams, New Jersey Metro. Mm -hmm. And her whole thing, and this is what Moses Saliva told me, is that she's like... She just stays silent. And every so often she'll ask a question and just let them talk. Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking, there's no way you're going to learn what they want. Correct. You'll end up just saying what you want or what your ideas are rather than what their thoughts, their ideas are. And they're the ones buying it. So be quiet and ask some questions. And when you're done asking questions, think about, is there one more thing I can ask? There probably is. Mm-hmm. I'm, 
in uh, most of my interviews, I always love asking the question, is there a question I didn't ask? And how would you have answered it? Because without fail, number one, humans are human. They always have that one thing that they're in a conversation being like, please bring this up. Come on, ask the question. Come on, ask it <laughs> so that they can answer it. For me, it's generational wealth. If you aren't asking me about it, I'm going to bring it up. Great. So that's why I always ask it. And it always throws people for a loop. How do you ask it? What do you say? I say we normally come to the end of a conversation. And, I, and this is normally for my interviews. I haven't yet used this on a client. But I say, okay, well, we've been, I've been asking you all these questions. You've been telling me a lot about yourself. What is one question you wish we had asked? And how would you have gone about answering it? Mm-hmm. So is there any question you wish I had asked? Good. And how would you have answered it? Um, I think, you know, maybe talking about with the change in the market, um, mm -hmm. the difference in uh, buyer consultation questions maybe would, would be something that would be good to talk about in terms of questions. In what sense? Well, you know, I think I mentioned lending already in this conversation, but, you know, agents today are really going back to school. So, you know, asking, maybe coming up with a set of questions that you ask buyers or talk to sellers about in terms of interest rates, the hot topic, right? Where you're not coming off as the expert. You've gone back to school to learn everything that's going on with lending, you know, and, and mortgage options, but you don't want to come off as the know-it-all you know, you want to come off as the person who asks the best questions so you can help them the most in terms of navigating buying or selling in this uh, weird time that we're in. So I don't particularly have those questions, but I think that that would be an interesting new set of questions for an agent to develop when, you know, when meeting with a buyer, particularly when meeting with a buyer, I would say. I, I, here's an example, right? So. When you're talking, when you have your first consultation with a buyer, your instinct might be to say, are you pre-approved? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. There's a way better way to ask that question. Have you had the opportunity to speak with a lender? Mm -hmm. Now, why right. would you say that's a better way? Because I do use the second way, but I used right. to use the first way. Right. Well, first of all, the word opportunity, isn't that such a great growth kind of word? You know, so like mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about having the opportunity to speak with a lender is like, it's teamwork, opportunity, growth. There's just such a different mindset around the way you ask that question. Mm -hmm. Now, you, if they say, yes, I have had the opportunity to speak with a lender, great. How long ago was that? Because I'm wondering, have you had the opportunity recently because so much has changed with what might be available to you mm -hmm. in terms of mortgage products? How would you... Okay, here's a great example. How mm -hmm. would you now do that for people you've been working with and you want them to go back and talk to the mortgage person because rates keep going up. One of my clients, I met him last week. He could afford 250. Now yeah. suddenly he can only afford 225 and that was in a week. Yep. So how would you go about, especially for your long-term clients, how do you go about when you're talking to them, be like, hey, have you talked to that mortgage lender recently because the rates are crazy? They're going up and down. Something about, um, hey, are you aware, aware that it's really time for an update? I'm excited for you to talk to XYZ person. Nah, are you aware maybe puts them on the defensive a little bit. I'm not sure. There's got to be a better way to say that. <laughs> we have to think on that. But it, it's something about it's time for an update because. Right? Cool. It's not about you yeah. saying there's this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. You know that there's this, these things. It's yeah. about... Do asking they? them to explore. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's that intrinsic value that they need. Because here's the, the intrinsic of like, I want to do this. Because mm -hmm. if someone's pushing them on the outside, they might end up doing it. But it's going to be a hell of a lot more work. Yeah. Yep. And also you don't end up finding out what they want. <laughs> and believe me, buyers today still want. They still want what they want. Mm -hmm. And you've got it again, you're their guide. Yeah. Cool. Is there any topic you wanted to cover while we're on here? I don't 
think so. But I do want to say thank you to you for all of these videos because it's a big win-win, Craig, so I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So thank you so much, Jackie, for coming on today. We learned Thanks a lot about Thanks for having me, Craig. Thank you. All right. Have a great day.